Dixie does, but it just takes too long to pull these old big quilts. <laughs> I thought cause mama's name was Pansy. We're saving you. We pulled you from the A pansy quilt. It didn't take a long time to do this, did it, Cindy? How long do you think it took? How many months or weeks did you work on it? Yeah. I just sit here and do it when I'm we're watching television, just nobody but Ben Cindy. Got it quiet and peaceful. <coughs> but my hands got so bad, I've not quilted any big ones this year so far. I usually do one, at least one or two of you a winner. What you do over there, Granny? I set my britches to my quilt. It'll be pretty when I get up. <laughs> <laughs> Feelings in your pants because you didn't feel that you were sewing yourself. I know it must not been tied on my legs, was it? But it was tied. And I went to pull my thread and looked at it. <laughs> What's the matter? Pulled my quilt up and had my breeches with it. <laughs> One of these days, say, I can set and laugh about Mom and wish she's back here with them, or I can't. Oh, Hey guys, it's Memo Dixie here, and a few weeks ago I asked people what color they thought I should do my quilt in. Well, the response was multicolor. So that's what I've decided to do, but I wanted to make a quilt that would be an awareness instead of just a wedding ring. That's the cool thing about quilting and sewing. You can make whatever you want to and, and make it fit. But now my question is, what are you aware of? Each color represents different things. That's like pink. Most every time you see pink, you always think of breast cancer, which that's true. But pink also represents childhood cancer, uh, birth parents. You've got orange. Orange represents COPD, uh, leukemia. Child hunger, all kinds of hunger, lupus. You've got different colors for different colors. I'll do. I'm, I'm starting on a teal now. And teal is ovarian cancer. Uh, it's weight rape awareness. It's uh, food allergy awareness. There's just all kinds of awareness for each color. I'm going to be doing about anywhere from 12 to 16 blocks. Hey guys, Mima Dixie here, and I am embroidering on my quilt just to kind of show you how I do it. I use three strands of embroidery thread, so it comes in two whenever you open it up. I meant six whenever you open it up, and I just split it, and I use three strands at a time. Um, now, if I'm doing something that's like really, really small and really busy, I'll use two strands. But most of the time, I use three strands on everything that I embroidery, unless it's like really small and really busy, and then I'll use two. But just trying to give you a good look at how you do this and it's really simple now I don't do the cross stitch that you count only ones I do is the stamp or some that I've drawn because if I have to sit and count it one thing my eyes aren't good enough to see it and another thing it absolutely makes me a nervous wreck so I'm just like over it 
and end up throwing the trash because I just cannot do it. But doing it this way, I can see what I'm doing and I can kind of visualize before I even pick my colors to what I want it to be because I normally, when I get the pattern, it's not very often that I even use the colors that it calls for. I just kind of look at it and do my own colors. So, I'm going to continue to work on this. I have several to do, and not a whole lot of time to do it in, because you know what? It's less than two months till Christmas, and I'm not even ready. I've got two quilts to quilt before Christmas. So, catch you later. Okay, this is Mima here. And I have all my embroidering done on my quilt that I'm making. It's my awareness, circle of awareness. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to trim it up. And I'll go down the sides and, and trim it all up. And once I trim it, I'm going to start putting it and sewing it together. And when I get it all sewed together... Then I'll get back with you and show you what it looks like. And I'm getting ready to start sewing my blocks together. And I always start out with a, a piece of scrap, or I call it a dummy piece. And that way I make sure that uh, my sewing machine's not going to be clogging up on me. And that way if it does, it'll do it on the dummy sheet and not do it on my good squares. And that way I don't have to risk making a hole or anything in my square. So I'll start out with a dummy piece. And this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes if your bombing gets messed up, this is what will happen to it. So I always start out with a dummy sheet. And then I don't have a big mess on my quilt. So I hate that happen, but I'm glad that you got to see what I was talking about on my dummy sheet. So I'm going to start out to make sure what had happened here was my sewing machine had come unthreaded. So therefore, it messed up. So I'll re-thread it. I can see. And my bobbin's mess. See, I'm pulling so my bobbin's mess. So I've re-threaded it. I'm gonna take it off. Take my bobbin out. And I'm going to re-thread my bobbin. You can't see what I'm doing, but that's what I'm putting it in here to do. Sometimes if your bobbin's running low, this is what happens. It'll want to get clogged up in there. So we're going to try it again. It's working good, so I'll start sewing up my strips. Now, I've got 20 squares that makes this quilt. But I have to be really careful because this is a continuous quilt, and it's going to have a continuous circle, so I have to make sure everything matches up perfect or my 
circles won't be. They'll be egg shaped instead of circles, I guess is what you call it. So here we go. We're going to get started. I'm going to double check to make sure that I have everything straight on it so I don't have to take and rip anything out. cut my dummy strip off because I've used I'll be using it the whole time I've been doing this. And I will turn it over to make sure that I've got my lines matched up. They're matched up perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I will press this off and I will continue. I have two more to put on. It takes four to a line. And once I get my lines on there, then I will go ahead and sew them up together and it won't be long and we'll have this quilt all done. Okay guys, I have my awareness quilt all sewed together. It's got all the colors that people had asked for in it and I'm calling it a circle of awareness a circle of love each one of these squares represents an awareness so turned out pretty good now all I have to do is get it ready to start quilting I have my quilt down and I am fixing to iron it off and I'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready to uh, put it down so I can start quilting it maybe tonight and what I have here is these little clips are called clover clips but that's what I'll use to uh, pin it down with they're really neat and they're really easy to use it holds everything in place, but you want to iron it down good. I have my backing, which I use a sheet, and I use a sheet because I don't want a big line down the back. And it's actually cheaper to use a sheet than it is just to use material. And then I put my cotton down and then put my pattern that I'm going to quilt on top. So I'm going to pin it down really good. Okay, guys, I've got my quilt pinned down. I tell you, the whole time I was working on this and uh, embroidering these, I prayed over each one of these squares for people that's going through this. You know, we live in a time that's chaotic. There's so much bitterness and hatred. And you never know what somebody else is going through. So... I have prayed over each one of these squares, and I hope that you guys do too, because you never know what your neighbor or somebody that they know. I know this quilt will touch everybody in one way or another, so I just pray that uh, you guys will get a blessing from this quilt. I know I will, and I'm looking forward to getting it quilted, so I'll start quilting on it probably tonight now that I've got it all pinned down. That's the hardest part for me is getting started. Once I get started, then I'm a-okay. So I'm excited to get started on it. And I thank you guys for all your inputs. I believe it's going to really turn out to be a pretty quilt. Thanks.
Good morning, Nemo here. I am quilting today. And what I'm doing right now, I have turned my quilt over to make sure that I have everything pulled tight. And I'll do this three or four times while I am quilting because I don't want any wrinkles in the back of my quilt. I want it to look as pretty in the back as it will in the front. And, uh, what I have, this quilt rack is, is actually on a stand, and this is a loop, so you can use it on the stand, or you can take it off and use it in a loop. And I like to quilt in this recliner, so I took it off, and I'm quilting um, in the recliner on this loop. Now, when I put it on the stand, I like it because I can... Uh, I can do it at the, on the couch, I can take it outside on the porch and work when it's warm and uh, and it's not big and bulky. Now I have a big quilt rack and I used to use it when the kids was little but they'd end up playing cowboys on it and riding my quilt down and it's just so big and it's really I don't have room for it. So I like this little quilt rack because... I can move it around and I can adjust and just use the hoop or I can use it on the stand either way. Now, quilting is a very, very slow process, but I just love to do it. And it just takes a long time. Now, if you're going to quilt on a quilting machine, you can do a quilt like in a day. But... <laughs> If you're going to hand quilt, then it's going to take you a couple months to get this quilt. And normally when you're quilting, especially if you're quilting on a big quilt rack, you want to start in the middle and work out. If I'm working on a baby quilt or something like that, I'll start on the ends and work in. This one I'm starting on the ends, but once I get towards the middle, I'll flip it back around and I'll pull everything this way. Right now, I'm pushing everything that away to make sure that it's straight and uh, everything stays in line. Now, it's still pinned down. I only take the pins out of what I am uh, working on at the time. I'm trying to get it up where you can kind of see what I'm doing. But all you do is just, I have uh, my right hand in under it because I'm left-handed. I quilt with my left hand. But I have my guider hand is an under it with the needle guiding it. And uh, you just bring it in and out just like you're uh, hemming something or something like that. I mean, it's, it's really easy to do. And this one's kind of easier because I've got a pattern to go by. Now, if you want to uh, quilt one with lines in it. I know years ago they would take a uh, a pencil and something straight, like straight edge and just draw lines and then they would go quilt by those lines. But I have found out that if you use masking tape, which I do if I'm going to do anything with lines, I put my tape down and then I quilt along the masking tape and I take it up and then you don't have to worry about any uh, pencil markings or anything like that on your quilt. It'll be just a straight line and you don't have to worry about anything else on your quilt. You have to worry about it washing out when you wash it. So the masking tape my opinion, you can get it in a couple sizes. I like to use the small. It's not um, maybe even a half an inch. I use the smallest masking tape that they make. And uh, to make my lines, I know Mom, she uses the bigger, but her hands are getting so bad that she just can't hardly quilt. And one thing, too, she gets excited and wants to hurry and get it done too. So she uses the bigger lines. And I use the smaller. It takes longer. 
and it's more busier but I think it turns out a lot more prettier so this is all you have to do to quilt it's a long process but if it's really cold like it is this morning 21 nothing to do much outside then I just sit here and work on it through the day if I don't have anything else to do and this is what I usually do at night time while my husband's watching the westerns and is I'll sit and quilt a couple hours before bedtime so this is not something that I can do all the time I can lay it to the side and just work on it when I want to but this is what you do to quilt and I got a lot of it to do on this quilt because it turned out bigger than what I anticipated it to do. There's 20 squares in it and each one of the the squares and each one of the circles will be quilted around besides it has a pattern in the middle you can see here and it's hand quilted and I go around all the sides inside and out all the way around so it will be a beautiful quilt when I get it done. Okay, our awareness quilt is quilted. And now I've got it laying out on the table and I'm going to trim it all up so I can get ready to put the binding on. So I'm going to trim it and when I get ready for the binding, I'll get back with you. Okay, my awareness quilt is quilted. I trimmed it off. And now I'm going to get ready to start measuring it out and to put the binding on. And once we get the binding on, this project's going to be done. Okay guys, we have our awareness quilt finished. Everything on it is hand done, all the embroidery, all the quilting, all the binding, everything has been hand done. And thanks to the fans, we have an awareness quilt. I went through with all the messages and texts and for every color that everybody had asked for. So I'm gonna do a quick rerun on what colors we do have. We have pink for breast cancer and we have purple for uh, Alzheimer's, domestic violence, pancreatic cancer, uh, dementia. Teresa asked for it. It's in honor of Aunt Norma who had pancreatic cancer. Uh, Alzheimer's Aunt Judy has it. And also purple is a survivor color so I can do the purple too since I'm a survivor. Uh, we go to orange. Orange is for Cindy, COPD. It's also leukemia. Courtney. World hunger. Courtney had leukemia. We go for teal. Mom had ovarian cancer. And it's also for Luann. It's called a big long $15 word that I don't know. But it's for women that can't have kids. They're barren. Uh, Kelly Green is honor of Ellie, uh, Eddie Richards, bile duct cancer, gallbladder cancer, organ, and it is also an organ donation color. Pepperknickel is for uh, Joy Cox. She wanted that for her daddy. It's esophagus cancer. Sky Blue was from Kathy. She wanted it for right here, Sky Blue. She wanted it for type 1 diabetes. Orange and blue right here is for bullying. We see a lot of that in schools today and even out in the world, even in the churches. Sad to say, but it is. That's for bullying. Purple and tur turquoise, I think Anna asked for it. It's up here, it's for addiction, recovery suicide, domestic abuse, mental health. Gold, it was for Courtney, childhood cancer, it's in the corner. And leukemia for Javon. Red, burgundy, and white 
It's right here. That is in honor of, uh, for Judy Bouton, it's for Mike. He went through uh, throat cancer, so that was for him. Red, red covers about everything. It's blood cancer, heart, stroke, DUI awareness, addiction. It just covers tons of stuff. Yellow right here, suicide prevention, bone cancer. You know my grandma had bone cancer. So for her, obesity, bladder cancer, and it's also in honor of our troops. Plum, wherever Plum went. Uh, Plum's down here. That's for caregivers. Royal blue with yellow and red and teal is for autism. Yellow is for sex trafficking, awareness, Down syndrome, and child abuse. Red and yellow, believe it or not, this came out about two or three months ago. It was a life square I did right here. And it's COVID-19. Peach is for... Uh, uterus cancer and two or three more different types of cancer and it's right here black and orange and blue right up here is for it's in honor of rescue uh, first responders injured or hurt in the line of duty or off-duty police officers injured or hurt in the line of duty purple and green purple and green is somewhere purple and green down here it's for hospice care and pink and blue is right here and that honors that we do care so we got 20 squares and we had 20 responses and I think it turned out really good and how long did it take you to make it right out if this took me like a day to embroidery each Square, so I know for sure it took me like 20 days to 25 to do the embroidery, but it took me about two months to quilt it because I just quilt at night time. So it took me what three days to put the binding on because it's all by hand. So we really thank you, fans. Uh, any more suggestions on what you need quilted? If my hands can hold up before canning season, then we'll try to get her one done for you. Thanks. I just wanted to thank everybody for your input on helping me get this quilt done. And I think it turned out really good. So thanks for watching Granny Women of Appalachia.